Hello and welcome to KGW News at 5 o'clock. Thank you for joining us. We're continuing to keep an eye on that dangerous heat that'll be with us for the next few days. If you haven't already, it's a good time to check in on your neighbors. Please do that. We'll tell you time and time again. We have a look at some of the heat that we'll have outside in just a minute, but first, why don't we go to KGW meteorologist Joe Ranieri, keeping an eye on the temperatures for us, Joe. Well, not only am I keeping an eye on the temperatures, I'm watching that smoke and haze, which is really thick throughout much of the metro area, not just here and locally, but across our state. You can see this is a live look from our Rose City camera as we look west into the West Hills. Yeah, you can't make out much of the uh, the city out there in a few spots. That's the case the more east you go as well. It's starting to thicken up really on the east end of the gorge and throughout the Oregon Cascades. But with the smoke and haze, it really didn't prevent us from warming up a whole lot. We're looking at 102 degrees right now, a couple degrees away from tying a record. There will be a few spots that by the end of the day probably have seen new records fall with our heat moving through. Now I want to focus on the smoke forecast. As we put this into motion, it's going to continue just to get thick and really nasty the next several hours and into tomorrow as well. So I have this stopped here early tomorrow morning. Yeah, that smoke is really going to be thickening up overnight. But if you travel south of Portland and even a little bit along the central Oregon coast, you're going to be seeing some light smoke here the next uh, 12 to 18 hours or so. And it gets pretty bad, though, heading into tomorrow afternoon. And tomorrow night, it starts to lighten up a little bit. But where it gets really bad is throughout the central and eastern side of the state. And air quality is definitely going to be suffering over the next couple of days as well because of this smoke and haze. We're OK right now in much of the metro area, but still starting to see a little bit of a switch with the air quality down to the moderate to unhealthy for some groups and down in southern Oregon you're looking at unhealthy to very unhealthy and coming up in my full forecast Dan and Laurel I'll talk more about how long the heat stays with us and we'll, when we'll finally see some cooler temperatures. It's already been here too long. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> the heat is so dangerous for people who don't have a way to cool down like air conditioning. People living outside and those without AC in their homes are especially vulnerable. Tim Gordon tells us how they're being helped. Well, we've been telling you how cooling centers are open all over the region, like this one at Vancouver's downtown library. But for those not going inside or who may be at risk in their own homes, people are helping. First thing Thursday morning, supplies being delivered, along with words of warning about the heat. Here on the streets of Portland, a Transition Projects outreach team checked in on people like Michael, who said the heat... You know, it's hard to breathe sometimes. The water and other supplies are appreciated. They got hearts of gold. And I think that there should be more people like that, you know, just on the earth. You know, it'd be great. You know, you see somebody down, help now. For those who could be vulnerable in their homes, Meals on Wheels people are delivering. Yeah. I've been volunteering, I would say about 10 years. Michelle Adamkak finds this work rewarding. Today, the watershed at Hillsdale affordable housing with no central air. Okay. Adam Cack has an extra mission to go with food deliveries. We should all have somebody that's checking in on, on us, but there are some people that really need that more than others, and I feel like that's a, that's a big role too. On her first stop, we hear the message. You can dial 211 if you need to go to a cooling shelter and somebody will be, would come and pick you up. Okay. Okay, so lots of water. Cool showers. Some of the folks living here have added AC. Meals on wheels. Do you have um, air conditioning? I have air conditioning. Okay, I think I asked you that last time. But especially for those without living here. It's too much in your apartment. 211. Yeah, and then just make sure that you're drinking lots of water, cool showers. Yeah. Whatever it takes, whether you're inside or out, to beat what could be deadly heat. So hopefully this inspires us as community members to check on our neighbors today and in the next few days. Now we'll send it back to you in the studio. Got it. Thanks, Tim. Meanwhile, TriMet is offering free rides again to anyone who needs to get to a cooling center and can't afford the fare. If you can't afford it, just get on the, one of the buses or trains. The driver will let you uh, get on for free. TriMet also says there may be some delays and reduced speeds on max lines this week because of the heat. So riders should give themselves a little bit of extra time before heading out. There are cooling centers located all across our area over the next couple of days, and we have another quick way to find them for you. Just text the word heat to the number on your screen, 503-226-5088, and we'll send you a direct link to a list of cooling centers straight to your phone. You'll also get a link to the latest forecasts and temperatures.
the Delta variant of COVID-19 continues to rip through Oregon. Take a look at some of these new numbers today. Set a record for known and presumed new cases of COVID-19 at 2,387. 670 people are hospitalized with COVID. That's a new record as well. 177 of those people are in the ICU, which is also a new record. On top of all of that, we've learned more than 1,200 kids, 11 and younger, got COVID in Oregon last month. Pat Doris is live now to explain why parents should be on the lookout at this point, Pat. Well, Dan, it's because of a rare and dangerous complication that's hit at least 20 kids in Oregon this year. Sometimes it can cause death, although I don't think that's happened here in Oregon. It's called multi-inflammatory system syndrome in children. Dr. Becky Riggs said she's cared for at least 20 kids who had that at Doran Becker Children's Hospital. The syndrome is thought to be caused by antibodies going haywire in the kids' bodies when COVID invades. That's according to the doctor. It often hits up to a month after the child first got COVID, and that first case can be mild, so it can surprise parents. It can cause inflammation in various parts of the body, from swelling in the brain to problems with the lungs, even the heart. Here are some major symptoms to watch out for. Um, the majority of children, it actually is starting more with GI symptoms, a lot of belly pain, cramping belly pain, um, and that then leads to just overall fatigue, weakness, headaches, and again, kind of a lot of symptoms that could, could be confused um, for, for an influenza type infection. So that's a problem too, it's easy to miss that. But if your child has had COVID or has it now, keep an eye on them. If you think they're in trouble, call your doctor immediately. If you can't get through, you can consider going to the emergency room, although they are so crowded right now, make that your last choice. Back to you. Yeah, good advice for all parents. I know parents are a little anxious right now. Pat, thank you. And it's not just hospitals and big metro areas that are bursting at the seams due to a spike in COVID cases. Rural hospitals are hurting too. Christine Pitawanich spoke with doctors and nurses in Southern Oregon struggling to keep up. In a Zoom call online, I learned hospital beds in Southern Oregon are overflowing. We have more COVID patients than we've ever had before. Uh, this is by far the worst we've seen since COVID began. We have no capacity. We have no beds, we have no staff. Many people are spilling into hallways, getting treated there and having to wait for medical care. Those with COVID are younger and sicker. We have surpassed anything we've seen before in terms of this disease. That's Dr. Jim Shames with Jackson County Public Health. He says the county has seen a 561% increase in COVID cases since about this time last month. Neighboring Josephine County is seeing much of the same. Right now in Josephine County, we've reached 1,000 cases in less than two weeks. Both counties have some of the lowest vaccination rates in Oregon. Jackson County houses about 10% uh, of the state's population and we have about 30% of the COVID positive individuals. Now Jackson County leaders have asked the state for help, requesting a field hospital, more staff, and ventilators for the region. Uh, our, our COVID numbers uh, here at Providence uh, are, are larger or more than what we're seeing up in our largest hospital in Portland, up at uh, St. Vincent's. Uh, we have as many COVID cases as what they do. Amanda Kotler, Vice President of Nursing for Asante, says the hospital system has canceled more than 350 surgeries because of the record high COVID numbers. We're talking about heart surgeries, brain surgery. Nurses, doctors, and staff are working on fumes. Uh, people are exhausted. Um, you, you can see it in their eyes. Some are traumatized. All are working hard, but it doesn't seem to be enough. I'm fearful that the darkest days of this pandemic may still be ahead of us. And because beds are full across Oregon, one doctor says they've looked as far north as Spokane and as far south as San Francisco, looking for places patients can go. But here's the deal. Doctors say the vast majority, roughly 94% of people coming in with COVID are unvaccinated. So they say the best way to protect yourself and your loved ones is to get the vaccine, wear a mask and stay physically distant. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News.
Thanks to Christine. Now we have learned that the Chinook Winds Casino Resort in Lincoln City has shut down at this point in order to keep guests and staff there safe. It's dealing with an outbreak of COVID cases and is closing until at least August 26th. With the Delta variant surging, we wanted to hear from people who decided not to get vaccinated. And would they reconsider now the case numbers were climbing? Here's Christelle Kumwe. I was more afraid for other people than for myself. Virginia followed restrictions and mandates aimed at slowing the spread of the coronavirus, but didn't want to get the vaccine. Her concern, the process to find one seemed rushed. But then the second that they, they did, like they just wanted everybody to get vaccinated and I didn't feel like it allowed them enough time to properly test it on a big pool of people. They brought it you know, to market so, so fast. Destiny Beller had similar concerns. She has multiple chronic conditions with some still undiagnosed. She worried about a serious reaction to the vaccine. It wasn't more the risk of, in my mind, then side effects that, that could have made things worse. But with news of the Delta variant making people sicker and spreading twice as fast as the original virus, both Destiny and Virginia had a change in attitude. I felt like the risks of any side effects from getting COVID were a lot more than any risks of that I would get from the vaccine. It's really getting to a point that where you cannot ignore the facts, the how, how dangerous and how bad it is. Both received their first dose of the vaccine in recent weeks. My arm hurt for the first day and her a little bit less the next day and that was it. So far about 55 percent of Oregonians are fully vaccinated with an additional 4.6 percent like Destiny and Virginia who have gotten at least their first dose. That's a total of about 2.5 million people. I'm glad I did. I feel I definitely feel like a relief and a bit more safe. Everybody should be able to choose for themselves, but honestly, at the end of the day, if we, if we want to really get back to <laughs> something that's close to normal, then uh, we should just all get it. Christelle Kumwe, KGW News.